You might think you know Beetlejuice, but the version we all love is far from the original vision. Behind the quirky humor and supernatural antics lies a much darker story that Tim Burton wisely transformed. In the movie, Beetlejuice is portrayed as a mischievous bio-exorcist, a ghost for hire who specializes in scaring the living out of their homes. But before Tim Burton gave him a dash of dark humor and a pinch of mischievous charm, Beetlejuice was a whole different beast, literally. In the original script, Beetlejuice wasn't just a ghost with a bad attitude. He was a full-on demonic entity with murder on his mind. This Beetlejuice, also known as Danny Death, was more of a predator than a prankster who focused on murder rather than just scaring people away. This version of Beetlejuice wasn't just hired to scare people out of their homes. He was hired to make sure they never came back forever. I'm not fond of Charles Dietz particularly, but you could have killed hey, him. Hey, I'm just doing my job. It's not that we had a deal. While Beetlejuice's character was softened for the big screen, the fate of the Maitlands wasn't quite as lucky. We all remember that fateful car crash that sent the Maitlands into the afterlife. A quick splash and poof they became ghosts. But the original script had a very different, much more gruesome idea of what their journey to the afterlife would look like. Instead of a simple plunge into the water, Barbara's arm got crushed by a piling, leaving her in agonizing pain before she ultimately drowned. The afterlife they encountered was also intended to be much more horrifying, filled with grotesque and terrifying spirits. This darker tone was eventually toned down to ensure the film could reach a broader audience, but it originally leaned heavily into horror. But the darkness didn't stop with the Maitlands. Things were about to get even more disturbing with the introduction of a new family member. The original script for Beetlejuice included a character who didn't make it to the final cut, Lydia's younger sister, Kathy. This addition wasn't just a minor change. Kathy was supposed to suffer a horrific fate at the hands of Beetlejuice, who would mutilate her after transforming into a vicious squirrel. Picture this, Beetlejuice taking on the form of a squirrel, going full on horror movie mode and mutilating poor Kathy. It's the kind of thing that would make you look at the squirrels in your backyard a little differently, right? Kathy's tragic fate wasn't just a one-off scare. It was meant to set the tone for Beetlejuice's character as a true monster, something far more dangerous than the mischievous ghost we've come to love. Kathy's removal from the final script was a mercy for the audiences, sparing them from what could have been one of the film's most unsettling moments. But the horror didn't stop there. Beetlejuice's twisted desires also targeted Lydia herself in a much darker way. What? Now this is where the original script takes a turn so dark that it's almost hard to imagine Beetlejuice ever being the cult classic it is today. One of the most disturbing elements of the original script was Beetlejuice attempting to rape Lydia Dietz. Not just once, but several times. The idea of Beetlejuice being a sexual predator would have added a layer of darkness that could have overshadowed any humor making the movie difficult to watch and even harder to enjoy. It's no surprise that this part of the script was completely removed, even in a film about ghosts and ghouls. Some things are just too dark to play for laughs. So thanks to Tim Burton, this idea got left out of the cutting room floor. Without such a change, it's hard to imagine how the audiences will feel if they know what the real Beetlejuice was like. Beetle breakfast? But Beetlejuice's dark intentions weren't the only frightening aspect. The original script also gave him powers that were anything but playful. It's showtime. In the original script, Beetlejuice powers were more explicitly tied to dark magic and demonic origins. Unlike the film's final version, where his abilities are often played for laughs, the early drafts depicted Beetlejuice's powers as rooted in ancient, malevolent forces. His powers included summoning terrifying creatures and manipulating the physical world with a sinister edge. These abilities were not just for mischief, 
They were designed to instill fear and exert control over both the living and the dead. But Beetlejuice's sinister powers weren't the only unsettling element. The original script also painted the Dietz family in a much darker light. In the final film, the Dietz family is quirky. Charles is the stressed out dad looking for peace. Delia is the eccentric stepmom with a flair for the dramatic. And Lydia is the goth teenager who just wants to be understood. But despite their differences, there's a sense that this family is just trying to get along in their own weird way. I'm here to relax and clip coupons. And damn it, I mean to do it. Then go do it quietly, dear, and let off when I think. But in the original script, the Dietzes were a whole different story. Their relationships weren't just dysfunctional, they were toxic and damaging. The Dietz family wasn't just a source of dark humor, but was intended to embody a more sinister form of family dysfunction. This portrayal would have added a psychological edge to the film, deepening its horror elements. I will live with you in this hellhole, but I must express myself. If you don't let me gut out this house and make it my own, I will go insane and I will take you with me! Thankfully, the decision was made to tone down these dynamics in order to balance the film's comedic aspects. Even after all this, the darkness didn't end with the characters. The original script also had a far more tragic conclusion. Perhaps the most shocking element of the original script was its ending. Instead of the upbeat and iconic dance sequence we know, the original plan was for Lydia to meet a tragic end by burning herself in fire. All so she could join her ghostly friends, the Maitlands, in the afterlife. It's hard to imagine, but this was nearly the ending that wrapped up Beetlejuice. A somber finale that would have left audiences reeling. And what about Beetlejuice himself? His punishment was originally far more brutal. Instead of the somewhat humorous shrinking head gag we got in the final film, the original script planned for him to be destroyed in a much grimmer way, matching the sinister tone of his earlier character. This was a fate designed to reflect the true darkness of his nature, a punishment as severe as the crimes he intended to commit. The changes Tim Burton made to Beetlejuice were instrumental in turning a deeply disturbing horror script into the dark comedy classic we know today. While the original script offers a fascinating glimpse into what it might have been, it's clear that Burton's vision was key to making Beetlejuice the enduring hit until today.